Hey, and welcome back to another segment of GEMS Podcast. With me today is a special guest, Susan Murphy. And you already know who I am, y'all. Genesis Amaris Kemp, the founder and host. But let me tell you a little bit more about Susan Murphy. She likes to say, you can't shoot at a moving target. She's been in the broadcast industry for over 40 years as a radio news director, a TV news reporter, and weather girl, back Mm -hmm. when they called them that. Mm -hmm. A talk show host and producer for radio, a public television producer, and on-air personality, a college dean and instructor, Mm -hmm. a voiceover artist, and now a broadcast voice coach. So she has done quite a bit. And Mm. today, Susan is going to tell us how can we find your authentic voice, take ownership of it, as well as give us some practical tips and tools that we can use to really ignite the power behind our own voice. Because you know what? No one else has our voice but us. So why aren't we allowing it to ignite? So without further ado, let's welcome the woman behind (laughs) it all, Susan. Oh, it's so nice to be here, Genesis. Thank you so much for having me. I love to talk about this subject. So you and I are going to have a great half hour, I promise. Thank you so much, Susan. And before we dive into your expertise, I definitely want to give the audience a chance to connect with you in a fun and personal way. So Mm -hmm. there are two options. We could do an icebreaker or a rapid fire 10 question game. What are you in the mood for? Let's do an icebreaker. Okie dokie. We're breaking the ice with Susan. I want you to share something crazy that you have done in your life or a fun and interesting fact about yourself. And if you're feeling frisky and you want to go over the top, combine both of them. (laughs) Okay. Here's one. I have had the opportunity to ride an elephant through the Queens Midtown Tunnel in New York City. Wow. That is definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. When I was a radio co-host and producer for a show in New York, this would have been in the mid-1980s, when Barnum and Bailey's Circus came to town, they would arrive by train. And the circus train, literally it was that, was parked in Queens, which is kind of in some people's opinion, it begins Long Island. It's because it's east of the East River. And the animals and much of the equipment have to be brought in through the Queens Midtown Tunnel, which goes under the East River. And then they walk the animals and whatever up to Madison Square Garden at 7th Avenue and 33rd Street. So, you know, those folks at, at the circus were not Uh, dummies, they would have radio and TV reporters have the opportunity if, if you were willing to be up. And I was anyway, as a morning drive reporter, I was, I was at work by 5am. And that's when they would walk the elephants through the tunnel. So I met the circus train in Queens, and then rode it through the tunnel, you know, with handlers and whatever. And then I did live broadcasts from on top of the elephant walking through the Queens Midtown Tunnel and over to Madison Square Garden. And sometimes I would try to get the elephant to say something, but she really wasn't interested. That is like super, super cool because normally you see uh, people riding horses or whatnot, but an elephant. So I definitely think that's one of the coolest things I've heard so far. Um, One of the coolest things about being a broadcaster is that your days are never the same. So depending on the stories, depending on what's going on, you just never know what you're going to be able to do next. One of my other favorite stories is this was also back at about the same time and the Oreo cookie, I think, was celebrating its, I don't remember, 45th anniversary, something like that, 25th. And I got a personal tour of the Nabisco factory in the New York area that made Oreo cookies. And I got to watch from the very beginning to the very end of how an Oreo cookie is made. And I made that into a radio feature 
We didn't have pictures and we didn't have smell of vision but I somehow managed to turn it into a really interesting tour. That is super, super cool. And now I see why you are the perfect candidate to talk about um, voice, voice coaching and the incredible things that you're doing on the forefront as well as behind the scenes because you've had this versatile background where you've done multiple things. You've pivoted, you've yes. learned a lot, you've seen a lot. And I think being well-rounded actually gives you a good insight to connect with other people because you work with all different types of personalities, different mm. industries, and etc. So did you always know that you wanted to end up being a voice coach? No, I never knew I was going to end up being a voice coach. They say, <laughs> There's a joke in the industry that most news reporters are high school uh, drama kids who don't know how to sing. Well, I do know how to sing, but sure, I wanted to be an actor. And my parents said, we're not going to pay for you to go to school and major in drama. So I majored in the next best thing, communications. And I went to Temple University and of course fell in love with it. And then I, I wanted to be a TV reporter. But a lot of my career was spent in radio, which I just loved because it really does radio and podcasting, which I just love too, really makes a viewer think you have to paint pictures in your head. It's a very simple medium. You can do other things while you're listening. And I've always loved radio. Yeah, I did television and I, I liked it. And I'm now a voice coach for TV anchors and reporters and even meteorologists who want to use their voices better. Because when I was coming up through school, most TV reporters started out in radio. Well, that's not true anymore. So most reporters get their broadcast journalism degrees and not a lot of time is spent in developing the voice. And to be honest with you, Genesis, if I'm watching a newscast and the sound of that reporter or anchor is just not one I can listen to, I turn the station. So it was about a year ago, I decided, you know what? I'm going to offer these services. I'll see where it goes. Maybe it'll fly. Maybe it won't. And I asked some news director friends of mine and they said, yeah, this is a great idea. I think it'll fly. And so I sort of hung out the shingle and advertised my services and it took off more than I thought it would. Um, TV anchors and reporters, not only do they need a little help in boosting that voice, and finding that authentic pitch. But the opportunity for me to mentor them, the opportunity for me to help them find their next jobs, put together their um, broadcast reels, that's been a joy for me to do. And when I worked at Hofstra University and I was there for 11 years, partly as a dean and partly as an instructor, I just, I really learned that teaching is something I've, I've been called to. So. I would never have been able to start the coaching business unless we had Zoom, unless the pandemic had happened. So I can coach people all over the world. So far, it's only been in the US, but, and I do it via Zoom and it's brilliant. So. That is amazing. And I always love to hear people's back end stories because sometimes people see where you are right now, but they never go beyond the surface level to hear how you had those zigzags and the non traditional path in order to land you where you are now. And let's talk about the power of really coming into who we are and taking ownership of that. Because once you know who you are, you're going to feel confident with your voice and you're going to be willing to really perfect your voice acumen and how you show up to the world and how people are able to recognize who you are by your voice and the content that you're putting out there. But sometimes we have people, let's be honest, who are introverts and they say, are people going to listen to me? Do I even matter? My voice sounds squeaky. My voice sounds high pitch. But if you keep allowing those thoughts or those inklings of imposter syndrome mm. kit inside of you, you're never going to speak. And when you do speak, you're not going to have that confidence. Something is going to be lacking. So can we talk about really taking ownership of our voice and how does a person ignite their voice? 
I was listening to you on a podcast the other day, and I confess I don't know where I was listening, but you said something that I actually wrote down, and I thought it was a brilliant quote. You said, once you know who you are, you won't have you won't fall victim to what the world wants you to be. And I thought that's it. Once you know who you are, then you can just set the world on fire because you're not worrying about what the rest of the world thinks of you. And I truly believe that that starts or can start with your voice. So many people in all kinds of industries lack confidence. And I think a lot of it starts with their voice. And if, if we can build that up a little bit, if we can get you to understand that your voice is uniquely you, your voice expresses who you are. I like to say, if your eyes are the windows to your soul, your mouth and your voice are the front door. Look, people are going to judge you on the way you speak. And you do have some control over that. A lot of people will say, oh, well, I was just born with this voice. Uh, you were born with a set of biological machinery, things that we put together to make voice that you can control. And everybody's perfect pitch is something you often have to look for. And I'll kind of explain that for just a little bit. Babies are born knowing how to breathe. You're going to find that out soon. When you watch a baby get like undressed, you're going to, I don't need this. Um, when you watch a baby get undressed and she, she's going to be put in the bath and she's really unhappy that you've undressed her, she's chilly, right? She starts to scream and she's taken in that air and her belly rises. It gets real big and she lets out that whale and then her belly contracts. Babies are born knowing how to breathe. Somewhere around the time we all learn to walk, it changes. We start to in fact, I believe the expression is we breathe conversationally, which means we have shallow breath, comes and goes. And yeah, it kind of gets in air, get, does get into your lungs. You couldn't breathe otherwise, but our quick breathing really doesn't get much past your chest. So what I do is I teach you how to access the beautiful vocal range that is sitting down in your diaphragm. You want me to show you how? Yes. All and right. you can use me as a guinea pig if you want. <laughs> All right. You're the guinea pig. But everybody watching or listening can do this. And I'll give you the quick version. So you're sitting, obviously, in a chair. Come forward a little bit in the chair. Make sure your back isn't touching anything. Next thing I want you to do is I want you to imagine the weight of your body very heavy down through the chair. Whew, you're just letting it all go. That weight of your body is sinking into the chair. And if we took that to the very far nth degree, we'd start to melt like the Wicked Witch of the West after they threw water on her. So we're going to counterbalance that a little bit. So yes, your weight is heavy through the chair. But now I want you to imagine your backbone from the very tip of your tailbone, up through your lower back, towards your middle back, coming up towards your shoulders and into your neck. And if your backbone continued into your skull, which it doesn't, but we're gonna pretend it does, let's say that backbone, much like this string of pearls, beautifully straight and as though somebody is gently pulling on the string of pearls. So yes, your weight is heavy in the chair, but your backbone is a string of pearls and someone's gently pulling on it, okay? Next thing I want you to think of, and this is something I learned from a singing vocal teacher about 25 years ago. This to me was life-changing. Wish I knew this 40 years ago. Next thing I want you to think about is your shoulders. Who knew your shoulders had so much to do with breathing, but they do. Where do we carry tension? Where do we carry stress? Where do we carry anxiety? Right yeah, here. Your shoulders. In your shoulders. Yeah. So 
Yes, your weight is heavy in the chair, but your backbone is a string of pearls and your shoulders are heavy and loose. As my singing teacher would say, no holding in the muscles across the top of your chest, across the top of your back. They are heavy and loose because when your shoulders tighten up, all the muscles in your neck, into your jaw, into your face tighten up, and pretty soon your shoulders pop up, and then the pitch of your voice rises, and then it's all the way up here, and you're breathing very conversationally. Bring it back down. Your weight's heavy in the chair, backbone's a string of pearls, and your shoulders are heavy and loose. Now I want you to think about your breath. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. But when you take the next breath, Genesis, be mindful of those shoulders. Don't let them move. The only thing that should move is as you bring in that beautiful air and energy, is your belly, like that baby on the changing table, that belly needs to expand with air. And when you exhale, it deflates like a balloon. Mm -hmm. So watch your shoulders, breathe in. I like to say breathe in on four and out on six. Work even harder at this, Genesis. I still see those shoulders. I know, they went up. <laughs> yep, let them go. There you go, girl, you got it. We have just done three things. You have lowered your heart rate. You have lowered your blood pressure. And what you have done is with your next breath and you know, you start with a big belly full of air, your next sentence, provided you've done this properly, is going to show you where that perfect range of pitch is. It's really that simple, but it does take practice. Yeah, it definitely does take practice. And as you were talking through it, I try to like use like my hand to put on my shoulder just so I could see if my shoulder was going up or down. And the first one, I did it incorrectly, y'all. My shoulder did rise and Susan noticed that. So she helped me. And then my other hand was on my belly. So I could feel as I was breathing, if my belly was extending or descending. And it's kind of hard right now because I am pregnant. <laughs> So I can't, <laughs> I can't, I felt it a little bit and then I right. felt that, but I definitely um, know about the importance of breath work because whenever I used to do yoga prior to being pregnant, that they teach you a lot about the breathing techniques and you learned about the box method in for four, out for four, in for four, out for four. And it also helps, I think they said what you're a parasympathetic uh, um, system. That's exactly right. Yes, it fights the, the fight or flight. Your, your sympathetic nervous system is responsible for your body being super aware and super on alert. Well, the breath activates the parasympathetic nervous system. So people who are nervous about speaking in front of a group or on Zoom or whatever. The breathing, and it is something you need to practice. What it does though, is it takes all those butterflies in your stomach and it just helps them to fly in formation because you need those butterflies. They provide the energy and the spark when you speak, but you don't want them to um, suddenly take over your brain. You don't want them to suddenly derail your train of thought. So the breath, when I, when I say to people, if you're really serious about um, finding this pitch more easily, you'll take four post-it notes and you'll write on them, I will notice my breath. One goes on your steering wheel, one goes on your computer, one goes on your bathroom mirror, and the other goes on your refrigerator. And every time you pass it, stop, stand, lower the shoulders, lower the weight of your body down through the balls of your feet, up here we did it in the seat of your chair, and breathe in for four, out for six. The out for six part, by the way, is a little trick for broadcasters who sometimes fear they're going to run out of air while doing a story. But if I can show you that you're breathing in and really emptying the diaphragm, 
it sends the signal to your brain that says, oh no, she's okay. She's good. She's not going to run out of air. And if you do that for a minute, it's six breaths. And then go about your day until the next time you pass a post-it note and then do it again. And then pretty soon you'll be able to access that breath and that beautiful range and pitch pretty quickly. I like that exercise and thank you for doing it with me so I could be a guinea pig as well as um, talking about it for the audience because I definitely want the audience to begin to practice this because we definitely need to use our voice in every area of life, whether we're using it in a professional setting at work and we may have a leadership role and we're trying to command um, the respect that we deserve. Sometimes when you walk into the room, you're already being sized up. But if you walk in there and you're paying attention to your body language and the energy that you're exuberating, and then your voice follows it, then everything comes into alignment. So Susan, how important is diction of voice, tonality, speed, and et cetera, with coming into finding your voice? Because I think all of those are very important components. And I know whenever I did go to acting school for a little bit, we had to do a lot of monologues because kind of like you, I wanted to be a, an actress as well. But my mom is West Indian and my dad was South American. And my mom's like, you need to go to real school. That's not a real school in her book. <laughs> but my dad always like believed in like, you know, supporting me at all the ventures. And he was my biggest supporter. And I miss him dearly. He passed in November of 2020. So how important are those things that I mentioned um, with helping someone really ignite their voice? Because I think that sometimes we have it, but we're just missing something that we need to just kind of fine tune it to really get that motor going. Sure. And all those different things you mentioned, first of all, if I could, I want to address your dad. I'm sorry you've lost him and I'm sorry you miss him. And, you know, my dad passed 21 years ago and I still miss him, but we had similar dads. We had dads who always wanted to support us. We had dads who believed in what we wanted to do. And I think for women, that is so very important. And if I might take this just a, a one step further, I think for women who did not have a dad particularly, but a mother too, but a dad particularly who wasn't interested in her career, wasn't interested in her professional life, these women suffer. And it has been my experience in coaching young women whose voices are high pitched or Barbie doll or very breathy. I think for some of these women, that goes back to their childhood and to their relationships with people of authority, no doubt starting with their father and other people, mostly men of authority. And what they sadly learned was that those breathy baby doll voices got them what they needed or wanted or the attention they couldn't find elsewhere. I've also learned that women who have strident voices, who are just always talking up here where it's it, the pitch is just so too high and they're, those were the women who were always trying to seek attention in homes that had a lot of children or, or just they couldn't get attention. So their voice became you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. So they developed a voice that's not theirs. So when you dig down and when you find that beautiful pitch that the good Lord gave you and that so few of us access, one of the things that accessing that pitch does is, you know, and it is tied into the breath and you're right. What I've taught is a combination of what I've learned from voice lessons and yoga. You learn to slow down a little bit. So speaking with intentionality is important in our relationships. It's important in the boardroom. It's important on television. It's always important. When you speak with intentionality, you're not going a mile a minute and you're taking pauses every now and again. The pause allows the speaker to maybe reorder some thoughts or kind of get onto what they're going to go to next. But more importantly, 
It allows the listener to absorb what the speaker was just saying. Oh my gosh, I do this with my reporters all the time. So you need to make sure that your speed is not too, too fast. Tonality. You can't be monotone. You can't always be rushing a mile a minute. And you should never force your voice down. You should never, I mean, that will eventually result in, you know, that vocal fry that, you know, oh my gosh, that's so horrible, but let's not even go there. Speak the way the good Lord meant you to speak. And that's finding that right pitch. And I often tell people to practice um, in, in giving their, their presentations a little bit more oomph, a little bit more zip. Try reading a children's book out loud. Even if you don't have children, read to the dog. He or she will love it. But read to a child and take a a child's book and do it. And that at least allows you to start to hear in your head what you can do with your voice. But take those breaths. I'm not a believer in baby talk, um, which I know goes against the grain of a lot of pediatricians and whatever, but I don't believe in that. I do consider myself to be a baby whisperer. I have one granddaughter and I've nannied several children. And my authentic voice speaks to those babies and gets their attention, I think way more than, oh, aren't you so cute? Oh, I just love, oh, come on, we're going to go outside now. Let's get our jacket on. No, 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 no. I don't do that. So yes, using your voice and all its range is so important in every conversation we have. And so is listening in every conversation we have. So is listening. Those are amazing tips and it's it's a skill that takes time and practice and you definitely have to flex your voice muscles just like you um, take time to work on your other muscles throughout your body. So I tell people I would rather see you have progression over perfection because whenever you get it, you could mm. always fine tune it later on. Mm -hmm. And perfection is not something we anybody ever achieves. Not that you shouldn't always try to be better, but yes, I love that phrase progression better than perfection. Yeah. And Susan, I'm going to throw you an audible to see if there's anything else you want to add to the conversation before we jump into the call to action. So I am mindful of our 30 minute time commitment. <laughs> oh, thank goodness you are. Cause I wasn't even watching the clock having way too good a time. Um, I love just passing along these hints as, as ways for people to, we're all on a journey of self-discovery. We're all trying to figure out our path. We're all trying to determine where it is we're going. And nobody, I didn't see me being a voice coach 20 and 40 years ago, but here I am and I love it. So allow your voice to speak to you. Your, your voice speaks for you but let it speak to you as well. Allow that breath in those moments to just inform your life. I always have my reporters in the newsroom when all hell is breaking loose and it's crazy town. Wait, close your eyes. Take two or three breaths. Just breathe. Open your eyes and, and things will be a little clearer. Clarity. The breath brings you clarity. Amazing. And now let's jump into the call to action part of this segment, Susan. You've dropped so many gems throughout the recording. What is your call to action for the audience outside of really being intentional with their breath work, taking ownership of their voice, and then using the four sticky method? Because I think having those sticky notes in those four various places also remind you and has those visual cues that just take time to breathe and reflect. It is so helpful in all areas um, of our lives. And I've also learned too, that what I can teach isn't just useful for broadcasters or podcasters. Um, I think podcasters often get into their head that, oh, anybody can be a podcaster, so I'm going to be a podcaster. Well, just because you can doesn't mean you should be. And again, if I don't like the sound of what I hear, you could be giving me great information. I'm not so sure. I'm going to stick with you. 
So I do do this professionally. You can find me on LinkedIn. I have a website called SusanMurphyVosat.com. And here's where you need to ask me what Vosat is. So what is a Vosat? <laughs> right. It's, it's TV broadcast shorthand for voice over sound on tape. So when you see a, uh, an anchor start a story, but then suddenly what we call B-roll comes up over her and you see pictures and then there might be an interview in there. Vosat is the voiceover sound on tape that the reporter wrote for that anchor so that he or she can read it and then get into the voice cut. And that's called a Vosat. So that's part of the name of my company because I improve your ability to write and deliver Vosat. Amazing. So primarily on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. where, you're, where you're helping, and then it's SusanMurphyVosat.com. Yep. So audience, all of Susan's contact information will be in the show notes. So make sure you read, scroll down, and tap in with her and support the work that she's doing and let her support you on your journey. This recording is found on 40 plus platforms. And the video will be on our YouTube channel, and you can find that by going to GEMS, G-E-M-S, with Genesis Amaris Kemp. And lastly, but not least, I want to thank each one of you for supporting the mission of GEMS Podcast, which is to bring content that is educational, inspirational, and motivational, while we also weave in diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, because it does take all of us coming together to, come in together to make this world a better place. So until the next guest, next segment, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Have yourself an amazing day. Very and same to you, Genesis, the very same to you. Thank you so much, Susan. And audience, your voice is powerful. Your voice is unique. And there is only one person that has your voice. So allow your voice to complete who you are in a holistic manner. And don't be afraid to open your mouth because you never know the power behind your voice and how it can shape someone else's life.